let's go over some of the basic techniques we're going to use with watercolor in this class. So this is dry right now, but that's uh, going for a flat, flat wash right there. So the other one would be a gradated wash. So I have my pre-mixed up paint, right? So mix up more paint than you think you need. I'm putting on pretty intense color here, and then I'm going to try to pull that wet edge down. And I can use my cloth. So again, with the uh, non-watercolor paper, it's important to just try to work quickly. So I'm just pulling it down. That's the general idea. For this, you could even take a little bit straight out of the palette if you wanted to, to get the most intense color right there. And then just start bringing it down, keeping that leading edge wet using some plain water. Again, it's not watercolor paper, so it can't handle all that much. You can go over it once it's dry, but you got to be careful not to reactivate the original wash because you can reactivate that binder, that gum Arabic with water. So just like everything on this not watercolor paper, try to work quickly and not like, get too much water or scrub the paper too much. Something like this. This is going to be like more of like a curved type of like cylinder or stock of a plant or something. So put a little yellow on there and then I can go in with my, try to do this edge here, working quickly, put my brush. There's already a big wrinkle right here from that wash. So I gotta be careful because it's gonna build up there. And if the watercolor puddles up, you're gonna get a, more pigments gonna settle there. So it's, you'll have big blotch. And that's part of the beauty of watercolor is that uncontrolled aspect of it that you're always gonna have. So it's that tension between the uncontrolled and the controlled. So just try to work with it enough that you can anticipate a little bit of what it's gonna do. Take your best shot at it, doing it perfectly, and then move on. I usually use flat brushes as much as I can because I find it easier to actually make straight lines with it using the side of the brush. Play around with like, you got your washes and then start doing like curved tube type things. And then see if you can get a branch on it. I'm just gonna hit this with a dryer for a minute. All right, it's pretty dry now. I hit it with a uh, the hair dryer. You can see that it's a little damp, but you can see like where there's little valleys and the pigment settled in. I got some bands there and everything. I got a little bit wide right there. This stayed pretty crisp there. So let's see what we can do. Use the tip of it to draw a little bit. So in East Asia, traditionally calligraphy was done with a brush and you can get beautiful expressive strokes out of your brush. I mean, some people spend a lot of money on their paint brushes to have better controlled calligraphic lines. Right, so I can play around with different types of shapes I can make with my brush by itself. Go back in and I can draw on top of some of these washes with my paintbrush. So think of it like drawing. Another thing that I like to do is trying to get one edge of my puddle of paint soft and one crisp. So do a stroke and then I'll try to break up one edge to make it more of a gradient like that. I'm gonna say this right here. Let's see if I can go over that again and see if I can smooth that out at all. So I'm gonna start off intense there. So I'm working on a pretty flat surface, but you can see that depending on your angle, it's gonna drip down, right? Some, some watercolor artists actually like to have a slight angle so they can anticipate it dripping down. So just experiment and see what effect you like. Let's move on basic cylinder type ideas. So I like the flat brush because I can fill large areas or I can turn it on its edge to make straight lines. And I prefer the round pointy brushes for small areas and for drawing more like calligraphic elements. So wet and wet, it's gonna bleed together and you can use that to your advantage. But when you wanna keep things separate, you have to be patient and let it dry between between coats of the paint. Be a little bit darker here. So I'm gonna try to get like a little wet and wet with that core shadow or the shadow side in general. So I'm sort of dabbing it in for the wet and wet technique, trying to, especially once the paper's wet, not to scrub it too much. Be careful of pooling up. Have your towel handy so you can soak up some of it. 
but I'm going to be going back into this. So I'm going to try to not overwork it because I know this is not my last chance to get it to do what I want. But I do want to be careful not to overly scrub the paper. All right, I'm going to dry this and come back. Actually, you know, before I move on, let's go talk about this real quick while that's drying a little bit. So especially if you're doing like plants and leaves and such, you're going to be running into this effect where you just you have the top become the bottom, twists around, right? So, you know, this blade of grass is a pretty good example right, where it twists and it's gonna go from front to back, top becomes the bottom, and how do you paint that? The way you draw that is you have this, like a sweeping S line here, and then this line here would be kind of coming back through, I'll have it pop out there, and then this would be the bottom side, right? something like that. So you end up with these sort of pointy, these pointy shapes like this, that sort of twist around. Got a couple of different ways I can do this. I can just do everything with like the lighter color or the lighter value, and let that settle down and dry, or I can put in just the darker side first, a little bit more intense color with a little bit of that wet and wet technique, a little bit more down here, do something like that. Let that settle down. It's pretty dry now. I did splatter some paint on it when I was mixing up a little bit more paint, so be careful about that. All right, so back to this. This is dry now, this is our cylinder. Remember we did that wet and wet technique. Notice it lightened up quite a lot when it dried. But now that's drier, I can go back in, I can try to get that shadow shape. See, it's a little harder for me to get a straight line with the round brush. I'm gonna try to get that hard edge, soft edge, like that. Have it get a little bit grady out here to the center. Careful not to scrub the paper too much. And then I'll go in, see if I can't get a little bit of a core shadow sort of idea with this wet and wet technique. 